you snuck in just ahead of Senator Hill, but we're going to let you go ahead and proceed. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is Senate Bill 1128. It does essentially three things. It allows residents to opt in to receive certain documents, such as annual budgets and policy statements by email, opting in via email. Second, it changes the notice requirement period for proposed rule changes to 28 days from 30 days for some procedural reasons in terms of the way the notices fall, which my witnesses can address. And finally, perhaps most significantly, allows for election by acclamation in the event that the number of candidates seeking election to a board of directors is equal to or fewer than the number of board seats available. Let me tell you what this bill does not do. It is not about determining who is eligible to vote. It is not about determining who is eligible to serve as a director. At least one other bill that this committee will be considering addresses those issues. Once those issues have been resolved, however, if only three candidates remain um, in the running for three vacancies, the bill would simplify the process and allow those individuals to be seated by acclamation. And I understand, Senator, that you are taking the proposed amendments detailed in the analysis. We are we are accepting the committee's amendments. Ma'am. As author's amendments. Yes. Very good. And with that, uh, thank you, sir. Nice and concise. Two witnesses, two minutes each, please. Good afternoon. Thank you, Madam Chair. Members, I'm Brad Hudson, CEO of Laguna Woods Village, a common interest development with 12,753 units. Uh, over 18,000 residents, all 55 years of age and older, were the sponsors of SB 1128. Most of our members live on modest fixed income. It is a low-income uh, community. We strive to be very efficient, and so this bill is a product of some of the efficiency initiatives that, that we've identified. As the senator said, first, uh, we sent a lot of documents out. This would allow uh, our residents to request them electronically via electronic communication, pretty simple there. Um, secondly, the bill would shorten the notice period from 30 to 28 days. Eight times this year, because of anomalies of the calendar, we had to wait two months to make a decision on something because there wasn't 28 days between meetings. And so um, as we meet at the, say, the first Tuesday of the month, there's not always enough days there to accommodate that. And then again, we had last item is is the acclamation last year we ran three elections that were unnecessary for a cost of over sixty thousand uh, dollars the last one the costs have gone up was twenty eight thousand alone and so uh, we think it's just a uh, good business good for our residents particularly low-income residents to not uh, expend their resources when the determination of the election is already known um, and so we ask that that you support uh, our bill. Thank you. Thank you very much. Other witnesses in support? Madam Chair, members of the committee, Louis Brown on behalf of the Community Associations Institute California Legislative Action Committee. For all the reasons stated, uh, we are in support of the bill and ask for an aye vote. Other witnesses in support? Sure. Any other witnesses in support uh, here in the audience? If you'd step forward, please. Okay, doesn't look that we do. So with that, uh, witnesses in opposition. Thank you, folks. Two witnesses, please. And then if there are others in opposition, uh, when we're done with the presentation, we'd ask you to line up by the microphone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair and members of the committee. My name is Tom Sir. I'm a retired Superior Court Commissioner from Alameda County. <clears throat> and I'm here on behalf of the Center for California Homeowner Association Law. We are opposing the acclamation provision in this bill. And I note that this is the third time this proposal has been made to the legislature. Uh, to, that is to allow HOA boards to uh, have the power to cancel elections by declaring that the number of candidates is the same or fewer than the number of vacant board positions, and then canceling the election and seating candidates by acclamation. In its first iteration, AB 1799 in 2016, that proposal was stopped here in the Senate Judiciary Committee. 
its second iteration that was AB 1426 introduced last year died uh, January 31st of this year without hearings. So why does this bill keep returning when we have reliable evidence that HOA boards are already inserting provisions into bylaws for seating board members by acclamation? It's already happening. I can give you an example of my very own uh, HOA where recent amendments were inserted into our bylaws at the suggestion of council, of our uh, HOA council. So it would appear to us that incumbent board members are seeking the blessing of this legislature that they are already doing uh, and that because they know that this really does wrongly deny HOA members their right to vote. Now, our, our opposition is based on the following. Unlike school boards or city councils, HOA boards have the extraordinary power to set the qualifications to run for office. We're not saying that this bill does that. It's already in the law. And we have a well-documented history of incumbent HOA board members abusing this and other powers to prevent challenges to their incumbency. For example, they've Thank prevented- you, sir. Two minutes is up. Thank you, sir. Next witness, please. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Eric Schiffer. I'm an attorney with the law firm of Schiffer & Boos. I am a certified appellate specialist. I was counsel of record in the Wittenberg versus Beachwalk Homeowners Association uh, published matter. And my practice does involve the representation of dissenting homeowners. And uh, I'm here to oppose uh, this uh, proposed amendment, uh, specifically the acclamation portion of this. And I think there's a little bit of a misnomer because uh, the issue isn't whether or not we're avoiding an election because there actually is an election when there's an acclamation. It's just an election without a ballot, right? So the issue really is, um, is the ballot an important part of the election process? And I'm here to tell you that um, I believe it is. Uh, the the premise that we begin with is that common interest developments are quasi-governmental entities, many cases have so held, and as such, um, their actions are their actions constitute private conduct which impacts a broad segment of society and therefore are considered matters of public interest. And that's language from the Damon case. Um, and I think it's not a, a stretch to take it from that premise that denying a ballot vote on matters that directly impact the community and impact the members' homes is uh, putting you on a road towards a, a constitutional or at a minimum a quasi-constitutional problem. So I think that is very problematic. The other problem I see is that this opens the door, this legislation opens the door to quelling dissenting views by finding ways to not allow nominations. I've seen that in practice um, time and time again. I get calls all the time in my office. And cost savings as a reason for doing that, I think, is subterfuge. And I think that is going to do nothing more than chill the voting process unnecessarily. Um, and you have to look no further than the legislative history to Civil Code 5105, actually 136303 at the time it was enacted in 2005. It was enacted to improve the integrity of the voting process because there was findings that it was contaminated by oppression, manipulation, and intimidation of the members. The proposed legislation, I believe, is a step backwards from that goal under the auspices of cost savings, and for that reason, I would urge a no vote. Thank, Thank you, very, you much. very much. Are there other witnesses in opposition? If so, would you please uh, make your way to the microphone, your name, your affiliation only, please? Um, Chairman Jackson, I'm Jeff Tardigia, an advocate. Kara, million plus here in California. Owl, um, disability rights. Probably several other bodies, but yes, I did owe the remarks through there, and there's other things, but that's what you want to hear. Thank you, sir. Always nice to see you here. Next witness in opposition, please. Marjorie Murray, Center for California Homeowner Association Law, on behalf of our thousands of members from San Diego to Modoc counties in opposition to this bill. Thank you. Next witness. Good afternoon, my name is Mary Beth Lewis. I'm a homeowner. I live down in Morgan Hill, which is in Santa Clara County, and I'm here to oppose SB 1128. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next witness. Hi, I flew all the way down from uh, Los Angeles, and I'm from Los Angeles, California, and I'm here to oppose Roe. I'm here to oppose that. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. I'm Jacob Marcus from Los Angeles, and 800 units 
Anderson, and I'm opposing this. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Diane Kiki Manster, uh, Chachella Madera, and I'm opposing it. Thank you very much. My name is Irene Aquion. I am from Morgan Hill, uh, Santa Clara County. I oppose the bill. Um, thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Linda Hobbs. I'm a condo owner. I flew here yesterday from San Pedro, California, Los Angeles County, and I oppose this bill. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Therese Lucas, and I'm from West Sacramento, Yolo County, and I'm in District 6, and I oppose this bill. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, my name is Raylene Williams. I'm a homeowner, homeowner within a HOA. I live in the city of Chachoa in the county of Madera, and I oppose this. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Marilyn Hughes. I own my home in livable, lovable Lodi, and I strongly oppose this bill. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Jacqueline Jackson. I'm an HOA homeowner, condo owner in Oakland, California, and I oppose this bill. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Michael Williams. I'm from Chalchilla, California, Madera County. Uh, at Chalchilla, the center of the universe, S. Anyway, we oppose this bill. Thank, Thank you. you. Good afternoon. My name is Caroline Arroyo, and I'm from Fremont, Alameda County, and I strongly oppose this bill that cancels elections. Thank you very much. I'm Margaret Sweeney from uh, Castro Valley. Alameda County and I oppose this bill. Thank you. I really apologize for being late, but Jennifer Wada on behalf of the California Association of Community Managers in support. In support. All right. All right. Is there anybody else in support? Anybody else in opposition? Anyone in strong neutrality? Okay. Seeing, hearing none, let's uh, bring it back to the dais. Uh, Senator Morlock, and I have a few comments as well. But Senator Morlock, please go ahead. Uh, sure. Senator Roth, would you like to respond to some of the arguments that have been made, please? Well, I will note that the, as the analysis noted, that municipalities seem to be able to use acclimation under the same circumstances. Uh, we're not talking, as I noted at the beginning, about determining qualifications to vote or qualifications to serve on a board. In fact, uh, the proponent of the sponsor of this bill, and certainly I, favor a free and open process to encourage all who want to serve and wish to serve on a board to do so and to submit their names um, as part of the process. Um, other bills deal with those issues. This bill does not. Voting is about uh, choosing between alternatives. And what we're saying here is after that free and open process, when all who wish to serve sign up to be candidates and submit, um, when the number of candidates, let's say three, equals the number of vacancies, let's see three, we say acclimation, and you do not need to go through the very formal and complicated process of running an election when the number of candidates equals the number of director vacancies on the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, I'll move the bill. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? Senator Monty? Thank you, Madam Chair. Appreciate the author's explanation. Just a little further follow up on that that last point. The main concern of opponents seems to be the election issue. Uh, the homeowners association would still require to give notice of the election process. Is that correct? And the nomination process. And in fact, the amendments that the committee has suggested, which we have uh, accepted as author's amendments, allow 30 days for that process to ensure that it's free and open and that all candidates who wish to submit their names do so and submit uh, to the election process if that's what you have. If there is an alternative uh, that needs to, where a choice needs to be made, there will be an election and a ballot process and the choice made. And as I think I also understand from the analysis, one of the motivations here is to save members uh, the cost of expensive elections if if there's not a contested uh, contest, is that? Exactly. And if, if individuals are interested in submitting to the process and, and uh, submitting their names for one of the vacancies, if there are more than the number of vacancies, there will be a full process exactly as the law requires. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. 
So I also want to uh, thank you for taking those amendments. I know there is a strong concern um, about suppression, and I know that historically there, are, there have been a number of instances where there has been uh, that concern. We've heard from a number of homeowners who uh, feel as though there, uh, there has been an effort to suppress their participation. So uh, the fact that we are here um, with um, a robust potential uh, of options of candidates, uh, but I also am aware that there are instances, for whatever reason, people don't want to serve, and that in those instances, in those instances alone, we're talking about uh, this measure becoming effective. So, um, um, you know, the, I think what you've done here, and I appreciate the, that uh, effort in taking the amendments so that any shortage of candidates that we see will be because of a genuine lack of interest or availability and not suppression. And I think that's important for the opponents here to understand. Um, and uh, I, I know that, uh, you know, there, there have been these problems uh, about suppressing dissent. We've got other bills today that uh, will address that. But um, these, uh, uh, those concerns, um, uh, go to issues around trying to disqualify candidates, uh, member disenfranchisement, lack of elections transparency, um, things that will still be a problem uh, if this measure doesn't get enacted. And I believe we have a, another bill today that does address those issues uh, by Senator Wykoski will address those at that time. So I, I appreciate the concerns. I do believe that you've uh, addressed the problem uh, to the um, in the best interests of those people who are concerned about this and also in reducing the costs uh, associated with people that just don't want to serve and that, um, you know, are not willing to step forward. But that is a very different issue. And so with that, um, I um, uh, want to thank you for your effort. And, and I know that we've seen this issue come to us before. And I think this time we've, we've got it right. And uh, we do have a motion. Uh, by uh, Senator Morlock, and the motion is due pass as amended to the Senate floor. Senator, would you like to close? Just respectfully ask for your I vote, and I thank you for your patience. Thank you, sir. Please call the roll. Jackson? Aye. Jackson, aye. Morlock? Aye. Morlock, aye. Anderson? Aye. Anderson, aye. Hertzberg? Monning? Monning, aye. Stern? Aye. Stern, aye. Wykowski? Five to five to zero. At this point in time, we'll place the matter on call um, for the absent member and appreciate your uh, presenting to us today. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Madam Chair, colleagues.